Hey Realmockers, coming in with a list of great locations to build in Nightingale's storied realms. I can't claim they're the quote-unquote best, because best is relative. Only you can honestly determine what's best for you. But I wanted to share these spots because they have a few traits that I find ideal as a builder. Also, I'm trying to get to 1k subs, so please subscribe if you haven't already. I really, really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into it. First place we're going to head to is the crossways at the Abeyance Realm. As you can see, I put my own cozy cabin here, mostly because it's extremely convenient and ridiculously safe. Literally nothing spawns up here or even wanders up here. You don't even need a respite for security. And check this out, I've got some portals here too. And this nice garden around the Realmic Transmuter. All in all, a pretty good spot. Another really good location is this area in the northern part of the Abeyance at coordinate B5. You'll probably recognize this as the spot where you pick up the simple watering can and simple sickle. The reason why I think this is good because it's got two plant boxes and a rain barrel already made. And that means you can start planting and farming right away even before you invest any essence towards gardening. And since the fence is invincible, you could easily use a sickle rank to harvest with abandon. I've got one last location to show here in the abeyance, and it's a cove all the way to the south at coordinate F4. I honestly like this area because of how absolutely gorgeous it is. There's this unfettered view of the ocean to the south, and this majestic waterfall to the north. There's this little spot in the cove where you can build. It's not very even, but it's beautiful. You could also build up here above the waterfall too. One thing to note about this realm is that the sun rises in the east, so make sure to build your base in the right direction, especially if you want to get a lot of light. Now let's head over to Sylvan's Cradle, and the first location here is actually in the town of Sylvan's Cradle itself. There's a number of buildings here that you could take over. In particular, Miriam and Cyril's house is nice and juicy because they have these refined workstations already built for you. Plus they got this nice bed that gives six comfort. So this is a great place to get your start, especially if you're trying to save up those tier 2 essences. You could also deconstruct any of these three houses, like this one here at the corner. It's got a lot of decent room to work with, although Ira and a couple of lampposts are in your way. It's not perfect, but it works. The best thing to do is to break out your mall and start breaking it all down. There's also one other spot at the southeastern section of the map, at coordinate F6. It's simply a gorgeous bayside location with a whole lot of flat land to build on. And because of the topography, you could build a harbor-type township, even though there aren't any boats to moor here. There are a couple of things to note about Sylvan's Cradle, though. For one thing, the terrain off in the distance is tinted red. It looks fine now, but when you switch your binder cards and change the appearance of the realm, that red is going to really stick out. Yeah. Also, the sun rises in the northwest, which means the beachside location will get some seriously beautiful sunsets. Luckin's Reach is one of my absolute favorite realms to build in. It's stunning during the day, sure, but it's jaw-droppingly gorgeous during the night. Honestly, you could build in any of the floating rocks that are around here and just be done with it. But I want to point out this great little spot just southeast of the Empyrean Well at coordinate E5. It's kind of an uneven mesa, but it's easily secured with only a handful of estate cairns, and there's plenty of room to build. I personally would put the main estate over here, and then some kind of lounging and observation tower on this rocky outcropping, just to look at the well down below. Here, the sun rises just slightly east of north. You know, Magwitch Marshes is probably the least popular realm to build in. The town you spawn at doesn't have any destructible buildings, and there's only one tiny house in the corner that's even aligned to the build grid. So, meh. And truthfully, the entire realm isn't terribly interesting to begin with because it's got all these NTCC factories everywhere. I think they're eyesores and they're taking up the best spots of land, but I guess that's pretty typical for this kind of company. But if you're into this aesthetic, then you can definitely build alongside them. There's a bit of area around them to build on. But otherwise, there's actually a decent area to the north at coordinate B5 and C5. You could certainly claim this area and make your own factory if you wanted. There's also a really nice forest right next to it, which you could spend an afternoon just walking around in. The sun rises in the northeast here, so building at this location guarantees a gorgeous dawn every time. Now I truly wanted to live in Gloriana's Tears to be perfectly honest. It's one of my favorite storied realms, especially because of the lore surrounding Oberon and Elizabeth. The realm just speaks to me because it exudes this bittersweet vibe. I would have loved to build up here in the main causeway between the two sites of power. It would have been super perfect. Problem is, it's just slightly off the build grid. Why? 
Thankfully, there are still a couple of decent locations to build in, with a slight caveat. Keep in mind that the main causeway runs from southwest to northeast, and that runs perpendicular to the sun, which rises in the northwest and sets in the southeast. Meaning there are certain spots in this map where your estate will get covered by its shadow, at some point during the day. That said, if you like sunrises, you can build on top of this mesa that stretches across coordinates C4 and D4. There's actually an incredible amount of flat area, which is really perfect for those who want a lot of space to experiment. The second location is right on the other side. It's also a mesa, and it's sitting on coordinate E5. It's a pretty good spot that doesn't get hit by the causeway shadow because a section of it has collapsed. It isn't quite as flat as the northern mesa, but it has this interesting floating building to spice things up. Plus, now it lies your neighbor, so that's a nice little upside. Hollowed Moor is a bit like Magwitch, where it isn't too popular to build in. It certainly would have been great to build on top of these three giant cannons, but none of them are aligned to the build grid. I feel like the devs don't want us to build anywhere super cool. Now you could build next to any of the four NPCs in the map. There's honestly a bit of flat land around each of them. Like, if you're a big fan of Poe like I am, you could build right next to his lighthouse. The guy needs looking out, after all. But perhaps my vote for the most interesting location to build is at the battlefield at coordinate F5. It's actually nicely aligned to the build grid, probably completely by accident, and it allows you to build up here really nicely. The sun rises slightly west of north on this map. Finally, we come to the Gauntlet Realms. Each of them are really stunning in their own way. The Forest Gauntlet has these wooden root-like structures right at the entrance. They're so striking that you can build right here and call it a day, but I recommend going to the highest point on the map instead. You can find this at coordinate E4. It's got a decent amount of area to build on, but not a lot of it's flat. It is a great spot for a hunting cabin though, and it gives you a seriously gorgeous view in every direction. The sun rises in the northwest in this realm. The Desert Gauntlet is probably my other favorite storied realm in the game. It's so absolutely stunning. Just look at this view. And lucky for us, there's a generously large and flat mesa at coordinates D4 and E4. You could even build next to this archaeological site, as though you're the one studying the ruins of this dead automaton king. Now the sun rises in the south here, but the sunsets are way, way better. Check this out. Finally, there's the Swamp Gauntlet where the sun rises in the south. In my mind, there's only a couple of really interesting locations here, and it's where the dead automaton kings are. The most obvious one is where the fabled automaton bishop spawns, over at coordinate E6. And it's absolutely amazing that it's on the build grid. Plus, it's literally protected by a bishop, so you know it's going to be pretty safe. I personally prefer the second build spot, though, even though this king isn't as visible. It's over here at coordinate D3. There's an infestation over here that you gotta deal with, but that's, that's no worries. The actual build spot though is right next to these two up on top of this hill. And if you wanted, you could build things out so you can get more of a township vibe. And what's really cool is you get this really great view of the swamp's tree line and that first dead automaton king. Anyway, those are my votes for great places to build in Nightingale's storied realms. Which one is your favorite? And if you have any locations to share, drop them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.